Many people try to say that the Injil is not trustworthy. The copy that we have now has been corrupted over time, that people have added to it, and it no longer says what it originally said. But this isn't really possible. You see, we have in our possession over 5,600 copies of the New Testament in ancient Greek, the first language in which it was written and spread. And so we can go to these thousands of copies and look and see what it actually said. And these are so old that one copy in particular was written within a hundred years of Jesus' life. It was written around 125 AD. And so we know what was said early, early on. Now we even have in our possession a whole copy of Kitab al-Muqaddis from 300 to 350 years after Jesus' death. So if we want to go and read from Genesis to Revelation, we have it. It's called Codex Sinaiticus. We have another one that's everything from Matthew to Revelation. It's called Codex Vaticanus. We can go see what it says. And both of these books were written 300 years before the time of Muhammad. So when Muhammad was here and he refers to the Injil, we know exactly what he's referring to because we have books from that time in history. We know exactly what he would have had in his possession if he referred to the Injil. And it's not been corrupted. It's exactly the same as what it was back then. In comparison to the manuscript record for other major historical writings of the ancient world, the Injil has far more manuscripts and far earlier manuscripts, with at least 5,700 ancient manuscripts in the original language. Furthermore, the time gap between the original date of the writing and the earliest manuscripts is dramatically less than any other classical works, being just 50 years. It doesn't stand to reason that a group who cherishes the Word of God who have been entrusted with the book of God, the Torah, all the way down to the Injil, would let a faction actually take their spiritual patrimony, their heritage in the scriptures, and actually pervert that without them saying nothing. Just decades after the death of Jesus, copies of the New Testament books were circulated thousands of kilometers all across Europe, Africa, and Asia to the various churches. Furthermore, at a very early stage, many of these provincial communities translated the scriptures into their mother tongue, providing a further barrier to anyone changing the original text. What are the odds that the Jews or the Christians could seize all of the copies that were there in the world? We know that it just the uh, New Testament manuscripts, and there were over 5,000 of them, to say nothing of countless hundreds of thousands of fragments. Who could have seized all of those and changed the text in a uniform fashion so that they would all say the same thing? Further powerful evidence for the New Testament's reliability is over a million quotations of it found in early Christian writings. Many of these early disciples of Jesus had met and knew personally Jesus' first twelve disciples. If all the New Testament manuscripts were destroyed, the original New Testament text could still be reconstructed almost entirely from quotations of it in the early writings of Christian leaders alone. In other words, if we deny the historical reliability of the New Testament, by the same standard we must far more strongly deny every other historical record of ancient civilization, including the Qur'an.